Hope you are live on the air. Welcome to the show. Thank you, William. Thank you for taking my call. Certainly. My name is Sam. I'm, I'm calling from Washington right now. If I may, I have um, one clarification question I'd like to ask. Um, and if I, because it's so hard to get a hold of the rabbi, and I appreciate his opinion so much, if I could dump two questions his way. Let's do. Um, let's let's do this. Uh, we we pretty much have time for one per caller. So pick your most important one okay. and give us that one. That way it'll free up the phone lines. Okay. My most important question would be: Does the rabbi believe that um, the God of Israel is also one of the gods of the Trinity? Um, I have difficulty with that. I don't believe that there's a that they're the same. Um, the reason why I ask is, um, I'm Jewish. I was going to town the other day. I was confronted by a Christian minister. Um, I told him I had already chosen my God. He insisted on trying to give me his God. Um, and whenever I try to say to him that I'm satisfied with my God, I don't want any other God, um, and he asked me why. I told him I didn't believe that they were the same. Um, anyways, to make a long story short, he tried to present to me the chapter in Luke um, where God came down as the Holy Ghost, overcovered Mary. I said that would be adultery. He raised his Bible and it was going to strike me. Um, if oh it would have been for people around, I would have been hit. Um but I do not believe, and I've tr tried to reconcile it, and I can't go to my local synagogue and ask the rabbi there because he's married to a Christian, um, so it's a Reformed synagogue. And his children That's attend terrible. synagogue on Saturday and Christian church on Sunday. And when I've tried to ask him, to him they are the same. To me, they're not. Um, I'd like the rabbi's opinion, please. That's a very liberal rabbi. Thank you. I've heard of rabbis that are liberal. You know, one rabbi is so liberal that his synagogue is closed on Jewish holidays. But anyway, that's uh, <laughs> that's the yeah 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 yeah. So the answer is that that the Christian doctrine of the Trinity is is is. Um, is a false belief, and it is opposed by the Jewish scriptures. And the God that the Christians worship is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because Christians believe that although they'll say this, we believe in one God. Every Christian will say, we believe in one God, but they will say, except for the modalists, but setting aside that, uh, the, the Christians will say all the time that we believe in one God, but in that one God there are three persons. There's, there's God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And although they are separate, they are separate in persons. Now these words don't even mean, well, like, what does person mean? They don't mean it, like separate person? And people who say I'm three persons usually wind up in a in a in a psychiatrist's office, um, but these are terms that don't have a conventional meaning that the church had to adopt because we don't think of persons in that way in conventional language because you have to come up with something and it, it, the church rightfully in the fourth century they had to essentially jettison the idea that the doctrine of the Trinity can be explained logically and can be understood. And the church, the church father described it as the greatest mystery. Now, look, Judaism, there can be mysteries in the Torah, of course, but there can't be contradiction. And, it, you should, and the teachings of the church that God came down as a man is impossible why can't God do anything? Well, could God come down as a statue? Why not? Really, some missionaries will argue, well, God can do everything. They play this, this little game. God can do everything, so couldn't he, if he so chooses? 
who are you to tell God that he can't come as a man? So he goes, well, maybe God can come as a big statue, as a big gold statue, as a wooden statue, as a stone statue. The answer is that I don't want to engage in any philosophical, could God, could not God. People do, it's a big mistake. He couldn't, forget the philosophy. The answer is, every person knows that HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't come in the form of a statue. Lama Farvas, why? Because it says the Tyra, do not worship anything that flies into any graven images, anything that flies in the heaven above, in the ground below. Read the Ten Commandments. And not a lot, this is a prohibition of the Tyra. In the same way, the Tyra says openly in First uh, Samuel chapter 15, verse 29, And the glory of Israel doesn't lie, because he's not a man, to change his mind. Numbers 23, 19, words given to Moshe Rabbeinu, a blessed memory, Moses, our teacher, that, the, that God is not a man, he should lie, he's not a mortal, he will not change his mind. That's what it says. People say, well, the Son of Man, Jesus calls the Son of Man, it means he must be saying he's divine. Nonsense. The Son of Man doesn't mean a person is divine. In fact, it says, do not put your trust in the Divim, in princes, and in the Son of Man. Shane like the Shua, where there is no salvation. The doctrine of the Trinity is a self-inflicted wound of the church. It is a doctrine that was developed. It's a improvement, meaning it's a higher Christology that was developed after the New Testament was completed, but you could see where the Christian Bible was going because there are texts that elevate Jesus very high, not to full-blown divinity, equal to the Father. That's later, but you have Jesus being exalted in the common Christi of Philippians 2, the, certainly the prologue of John chapter 1. In short, when Mashiach comes, remember this, my friends. The nations of the world are going to come to the Jewish people, and they're going to say these words. Surely our ancestors inherited lies and vanity where there can be no truth. How can a man make unto himself gods when they are now? If the nation are going to come to you and say that our ancestors possess nothing but false gods, how can a man make unto himself gods when they are not? Well, why would they be coming to the Jews, Zechariah 8, 23, uh, 10 Gentiles will grab 10 of the nations. The word Gentiles is really not a Jewish word. It's a, a Latin derivative word. The, the nations of the world will, 10 of the nations of the world will come to the Jew and say, take us with you, because now we know that God is with you. If we're wrong about Jesus, if we're wrong about the Trinity, if we're wrong about the doctrine of, of of salvation, if we're wrong about all this, then we should be the last people that that the nations will come to. It should say that, well, when Mashiach comes, the Jews are going to realize they've made the biggest mistake in the world, and they're going to come running to the to the Christian and say, all right, we didn't make a mistake. Tell us, you know, God so loved the world. Teach us the book of John. In short, the the Christian doctrine on the nature of God is, com is complete idolatry. I want to just say this because I'm going to get emails, a thousand emails from Christians who reject the Trinity, and there are such people. There are Unitarians, there are Christadelphians that utterly reject and see through this and recognize the fact that the doctrine of the Trinity was, is a later invention. The word Trinity itself was invented, was composed by a Latin church father, uh, Tertullian of Carthage, uh, uh, Theodophilus, if you want to use it, try it in Greek. It doesn't make it a bit. It's second century, third century. It means very, very late. This is a highly developed doctrine. It's complete idolatry, and I just want to share one other point. It is the most odious idolatry. And you're asking yourself, well, how can one, either it is or it isn't. How could it be one worse than the other? Is it worshipping stones worse than worshipping a statue made of silver? Well, the answer is actually there is a difference. If we look at the Ten Commandments, and I refer you to Exodus chapter 20, the Torah says these words, I am the Lord your God. 
who's took you out of Egypt from the house of bondage. This is very important. What, what kind of commitment is it? It doesn't sound like it. it means I'm the same one. I didn't change. If you're not sure, look at the next verse. You shall not have any other gods. Alpane means upon my face. It is usually or frequently charged, translated as before me. This is not correct. Literally it means Alpane means on my face. Now, as it turns out, there's another commandment that follows it, not to worship idols not to worship any graven images. That means it's, it's not that a person can't have a doll, you just can't worship it. So those are going to ask me about this, the brazen snake. No one worships that, but the key is you're not allowed to worship anything that any creation of God, forbidden to worship it, cannot. Okay, And therefore, we see that the very first commandment is, you remember I took you out of Egypt? I'm that Lord your God. If someone introduces something new, it ain't true. If someone wants to introduce the idea that, now look at this, you should have no other gods upon my face. That's exactly what the Trinity is, because Christians believe that there is a God who's the Father that created the heavens and the earth. But in addition to God, they believe that Jesus is a separate person and he's full deity. That is a shutfus. That's a partnership. In Arabic, it's a shirk. It is the most odious form of idolatry. And then the next prohibition is don't worship statues, meaning if someone worships Jesus as God and the Father as God, that's worse than bowing down to a statue, an idol of gold and silver. Worse. Why? It's simple. Because if a person is worshiping God and on top of that, adding on to God, that means you're married to God, but you have a mistress on the side. That's the worst thing you can possibly do. So, and that's why it's very interesting. I I debated a fellow, I'm not going to say his name, I don't like to do that, but I I debated a fellow on television, actually it was a Christian TV show, who, he's he's um, an an apologist, and he admitted that, in fact, the doctrine of the Trinity appears nowhere in the Jewish scriptures. We don't have the doctrine of the Trinity. Christians who go around say, oh, it's openly in the Old Testament. That's nonsense. There's no place in the, don't use this term, but Christians use the term Old Testament. There's no place in the Jewish scripture that says there's one God and three persons, these three are one. It doesn't say it. All they can do is say it is inferred that there is a complexity in the Godhead because Texts are misunderstood, misapprehended, and sometimes mistranslated. But the point is, it isn't anywhere in the Jewish scriptures. We don't have the doctrine of the Trinity anywhere in the Jewish Bible. It's interesting that the Torah says many times, for example, like Deuteronomy 13, when speaking of a false prophet who entices you, who shows you miracles and signs and wonders and says, let us follow other gods, gods that your father didn't know, that your fathers did not know. It's very interesting. It says, the text says that your fathers didn't know. Why, why is that important? Why can't the text simply say, do not worship other gods, period? What does it mean your fathers didn't know? Because you, if someone argues that there was a progressive revelation, oh, initially nobody knew about the Trinity. Daniel didn't worship the Trinity. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't believe in the Trinity. There's nowhere where they prayed to the Trinity. It doesn't exist. Nothing. So what are you going to say? What happened? God gave the Torah at Mount Sinai, and for 1,300 years, clearly nobody knew about the Trinity. I mean, what, they just thought that wasn't an important enough point to mention? And only 1,300 years later, when Jesus came, finally found out about the Trinity. They called it a progressive revelation. That's nonsense. It can't be a progressive revelation. Why? Because God is punishing the Jewish people for not worshiping God properly, and then only later on say, ha, ha, you didn't even know who God was. Why didn't he tell us from the beginning? Moreover, the Torah says over and over that if someone changes it from what your fathers knew, don't listen to him. Very interesting. Why does it say, why does it say in the text that the enticer will tell you to follow gods that your fathers did not know? Why is it your fathers did not know? Why is that relevant? The answer is that it never changed. The answer is, I am the Lord your God. Who am I? 
Am I the one that was revealed in the book of Matthew, Chas Vishalom, in the book of Mark, in the Gospels, in the letters of Paul, at the, at the Council of Nicaea, at the Council of Constantinople? Absolutely not. If you want to know who I am, I'm the God who took you out of Egypt from the house of bondage. I never changed. And if somebody says I changed, they're a liar. They're speaking presumptuously in the name of Hashem. In conclusion, um, the, the Christian concept of God is completely different than, than what it says in Tanakh. You will hear many nice peop people who go, oh, we all worship the same God. That's ecumenical nonsense. Maybe people want to just get along and they say things like that. They shouldn't, those words should never come out of of a God-fearing person's mouth, that I believe in the same God as the Christians. We don't. One other last point. When you described how the, the pastor will get angry at you, I will tell you this, and those who are Christians or were Christians know that I'm not making this up. There is nothing that will make your former co-religionists, there's nothing that will make Christians angrier than denying the doctrine of the Trinity. If a Christian went to his pastor and said, I don't know if I believe in God, or I don't believe in God anymore. I don't believe in God. Okay? 95% of the time, the pastor will smile. The pastor will say, come sit in the, my office, let's talk. Generally speaking, the pastor will be very nice about it. And the pastor will have a big smile and will just spend time working it through with you. At a messianic convention in, in Gaithersburg, Pennsylvania, if someone went over to some messianic leader and said, I don't think I believe in God, believe me, they will be very nice about it. And they'll usually 95% of the time say, you know, let's talk. Let's spend time together. Let's talk about it. But they, they won't get angry. They won't get angry. Conversely, if a Christian says to the pastor, I believe in God. I believe Jesus is Messiah. I just don't believe in the doctrine of the Trinity. I don't think Jesus was God. You are going to get an explosion. You are much more likely to get a far more virulent response than denying God altogether. Why? Because you're essentially saying the emperor has no clothes. All Christians who are in the know, realize this is a problem. When I speak at Christian universities, this is the issue. This is the issue, number one issue, that Christians raise with me, is how can I... I remember I was teaching in the Philippines. I was lecturing at the one of the oldest, most prestigious Christian universities in, in Manila. And, in fact, that was the first question that I was asked by a pastor. He says, how could we uh, in any way... Um, bridge the gulf between the belief in the Trinity and real monotheism. I said, you can't. And he was shocked because he didn't quite get why it was there. Maybe in the Philippines, maybe he wasn't that familiar with Jewish teachings. And in fact, former Christians almost always tell me that the issue they struggled with that incubated for a very long time was the doctrine of the Trinity. That's what bothered Christian. Christian will say, I used to bother me. I, maybe I didn't talk about it. I looked into it. Maybe I didn't say anything. I didn't want to get in trouble, whatever it was. But many, many Christians who eventually repented and left the church will say this was a very bothersome issue. One other point, and if you're a Christian, you know I'm telling the truth. Many Christian apologists admit, and I've seen this a thousand times, they will say that the vast majority of Christians don't even understand the doctrine of the Trinity. This is astounding. I don't want, again, I don't get involved in names. It's not important. But you, if you follow this at all, when you see Christian pastors, apologists, scholars, whatever, talking about the Trinity and how it's biblical, and they give a whole speech and how it's openly in the Bible, they almost invariably say that most Christians don't understand it. They think they know the Trinity, but actually they don't. And they'll, they will say, if you try to give any kind of metaphor, there's an egg, and it has a shell, and it has a yolk, and there's a white, but it's all one egg. That's, that, that is complete heresy in Christianity, because after all, the yolk is not the white, the white is not the shell. They're, not, they're completely separate. So they have the three atoms in a water molecule. They're not oxygen and hydrogen, are not the same. So 
it, as it turns out, I'm not making anything up because the Christians admit that this is something so confusing. I'll, I'll bring you another proof because really so much is at stake. If you don't believe what I'm saying or you, you question, maybe maybe this rabbi is overstating the case. For whatever reason, he has it in for Christianity. Try this out. Try it out, really. Go into a well-stocked Christian bookstore. You live in Little Rock, you live in Houston, you live in Dallas. There are some big Christian bookstores, meaning it's all they carry is Christian stuff. Some of them are half the size of a Walmart, enormous. They have whole sections. You can walk in and it says, where is the section about Christmas? Where is the section about Easter? Now, if you go in and try it out, really, please, try it out. Try this out in Houston as an example. I'll explain why Houston's interesting. Go into a Christian bookstore and ask, where is your section on the Doctrine of the Trinity? Guarantee you, they will take you to a place in the, in the store with shelves and shelves and shelves of books on the Trinity. Why is the Trinity biblical? How is the Trinity from? How do you know the Trinity? The Trinity, the Trinity. There's book shelves and shelves, not just shelves, there are whole bookcases, whole section just devoted to the doctrine of the Trinity. Guaranteed. Try it out. If you don't believe me, please, go into, if you live in Dallas, go into, the, there are some mega Christian bookstores in Dallas and Houston. Huge. Go in there. The whole section on the Doctrine and Trinity. So many books, books so fat like this to explain the Doctrine and Trinity. Now, the reason I say interesting about Houston, because Houston is home to the largest Jewish community in the state of Texas. I don't know. Let's say there are 50,000 Jews in Houston, something like that, 40,000, 50,000, okay, it's considerable. So try, go into, do the same experiment, go into a Jewish bookstore, or if you're in Jerusalem, you can go into very big Jewish bookstores, Feldheim, it's a huge bookstore in Jerusalem, huge, mega huge Jewish bookstore. If you're in Brooklyn, go to Eichler's bookstore, even on Coney Island Avenue or 13th Avenue. These are big, big, big bookstores, okay? Try it. Try it out and ask, where is your section on the oneness of God? Try it. And look at the face of the person <laughs> who's, who's, this, who's working the floor, helping, assisting customers. He will look at you and go, what? There is no section like that. There's a section on Jewish cooking, section on the laws of Shabbos for sure. But there's no section on the oneness of God. There isn't. Why? Because the answer is it doesn't require sections. <laughs> I, 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 I was talking to a person who will remain nameless, who showed me, we were having a Skype conversation, I will never say who he is. And he showed me, we were talking, I was helping the fellow, a very nice guy. And he showed me, we were talking about the Trinity, and he showed me a book that he, op he showed me on Skype that was so thick like this on the Trinity, proving Trinity is true. And I said, we don't have a book like that. The reason we don't have books is you don't need a book. Why? Because I'm God. I'm the only one. There's no one before me. There's no one after me. There's no God form aside from me. I will share my glory with no one. Read Isaiah 44. Read Isaiah 43. Read Isaiah 45, 46, 47, 48. Read it and repent. That's all. We don't need it. There's no one before me. No one after me. There's no one share my glory with no one. There is no Savior besides me. Isaiah 43. So openly says that. We don't need books. We don't have books like this thick written by a guy who has 48 PhDs. Why? What what kind of doctor do you need? He says, look, there's one Akkadosh Baruch there's only one, and as Maimonides just describes in his 13 principles of faith, and there is no oneness in the world, there's no unity in the world like God. Even a water molecule is not completely unified because there's uh, there's three atoms in it. Not an atom is not unified because in the atom you have all kinds of different things going on. There is no oneness like the Almighty. Blessed be His holy name. We don't need books. That's it. One Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Anyone can understand it. Ask yourself the question. I know I'm going into this, but I, I really it's a lot at stake. Why is the doctrine of the Trinity so complicated? Really, I mean, you have to like go to Dallas Theological Seminary for eighty years to figure it out. Whole classes on this, explaining it, how to defend it. 
why? Why? Why do you? Why can't the five-year-old understand it? I mean, really, and they can't. They can't. Jesus, God, the Father is God, and there's only one God. And kid, children will repeat these words, but they don't understand it the way the, fa- the Christians who are being apologists explain it. But a five-year-old Jewish child certainly, if you ask him, how many gods are there? There's one. Is there anything else between besides Hakadosh Baruch No one else. There's nothing else. There's only one Hashem in the world. Period. End. That means any person, anyone, even a three-year-old, understands that there's one Hashem. There is nothing else besides Him. Period. There's no other God. So he asks himself a question. Would God have a doctrine that's so complicated that you need 40 advanced degrees to understand? Why? That means that simple people who didn't at- attend Nyack Bible College don't really understand it unless they studied, they have a, at least a master's degree in theology. Why is it so complex? Why can't it be so? Let alone the obvious, the Tanakh is so clear that there is no one else, there is no gods with me, there's no one before, no one after me. Why would Tanakh say that? Do you mean to tell me a Tanakh, the Jewish scriptures, which is nearly 24,000 verses, it's enormous, huge. You're telling me that in all those verses, the God of Israel thought it wasn't important enough to put in one verse somewhere where it says there's one God and three persons, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just say that. Say what it says in the Nicene Creed, which is the product of the Council of Nicaea. Incidentally, it, the Nicene Creed, which emerged from the Council of Nicaea, it originally it was reworded a little bit, but essentially the same. Take a look at something else I just pointed out. I if you have a stomach for this, do it. You could look at the Nicene Creed, and you have the, the doctrine on the nature of the Father, nature of the Son, nature of the Holy Spirit. Notice how short the description is of the Father. Just a simple few sentences, that's the end of it. Skip the Son and go to the Holy Spirit. Not such a big... Go to the one with the Son. It's a whole long thing. And he's light, a very light. And on and on. And on. This whole elongated, spread out. It's huge. Why do you need so much description in order to explain this idea of what exactly is Jesus' nature? Why? Because it's like throwing a hundred darts at a target. Hopefully one lands. A yak and a yak and a yak and a yak. <laughs> I'm not making it up. When people talk too much, like me. Anyways, the point is that uh, the reason it requires so much explanation is it's inexplicable. The, what Christians believe, they, they've inherited from their fathers. I hope Hashem will have mercy on them. And I hope that they hear, they should only hear the word of Hashem, and they should repent, and their repentance will certainly bring the coming of the true Mashiach, and here be a menu quickly in our time. Thank you for that question. A 